Gracious and loving God, may only your words be spoken. May only your words be heard. Amen. When I was a clinical social worker practicing at Mass General Hospital, a client once said to me at the end of our time together, you know, Jeff, I spend a lot of time up in my head, and that's not always a good neighborhood for me to hang out in. <laughs> I've never forgotten that wisdom, and I've heard it from many sources since that time. Of course, when the client said it, it was true for me as well, as it is now, as it is for most of us, I think. We spend a lot of time up in our heads, and that's not always a good neighborhood for us to hang out in. Sticking with that metaphor of our minds as a neighborhood, I wonder why it isn't always a good place for us to spend time. And I think about who the neighbors are in that community of our minds. I think of the voices that are opening windows and yelling at us as we pass by. There, there's the house that fear lives in. They are always out front yelling at me to watch out, be careful, don't trust. There, on the other side of the street, that's the house that shame built. The voices from that yard yell at us to avoid embarrassment at all costs, to assume that we have done something wrong and that we are something wrong. So many voices from so many places, ego, pride, anger, despair, cynicism, all yelling their well-rehearsed tropes, usually a couple at the same time, if not all at once. Not a great neighborhood, not at all. So to drown out these voices, we turn up the volume in other places. I know for a fact that I am not the only one in this room who has gone to turn on the radio in my car to discover that the radio, in fact, was already on. In John's Gospel, Jesus tells a group of followers that they are not his. Kind of harsh, Jesus. But I understand his exasperation, I think. After all the signs, all the miracles, all the shared meals, and all the healings, they have the audacity to ask him how much longer he will keep them in suspense. When, they wonder, when will he tell them that he is the Messiah? Jesus has got to be thinking at this point, Seriously? What else do you want from me? The difference between the followers who do not yet get who Jesus is and what following him has to offer them and his other followers that do get it, it has nothing to do with what Jesus has or has not done. It has everything to do with their ability to hear the voice of God, to listen to it, to trust it, to follow it, and then to live it. Jesus has done everything he could up to that point to show them. He has taught them everything he had to teach. At some point, it is up to the follower to listen, to hear, to see, and then to trust, and to follow, and to know. At some point, his followers had to decide 
what voice they were going to listen to, which voice they would follow, and what life they would live. The voice of God is an awesome thing. It speaks creation into its very beginning in Genesis. It is the billowing voice that stretches and searches us out. And it is the still, small voice of God that whispers, Peace be with you. Hearing the voice of God, the voice of our Good Shepherd, amidst the noise of our lives and the chaos of the neighborhoods of our minds, it isn't always easy. I know. It requires intention. It takes practice. The voice of God isn't always a voice so loud it drowns out all the others. It can be a voice so quiet it comes not over the chaos, but through it. As if scanning the stations on that car radio, the voice of God breaks through the noise and the static to speak to us words of peace. And when we hear it, we know it. Our shoulders relax a little bit. Our minds seem to calm. Our heart rests. We are, in that moment, home, wherever we might be in the world. Can you hear the still small voice of God that calls to you right now with whatever cacophony of noises are filling your ears these days, can you hear God speaking to you through all of that? Can you hear the voice of the Good Shepherd calling you, calling you to still waters and verdant pastures, assuring you as you walk through the valleys of death in your life, that you need not fear. The voice inviting you to a banquet set just for you. Right there, in the middle of that neighborhood of your soul. Asking you to sit, rest, feast. Right there. Can you hear the voice of God through all the noise? And can we, here at St. Paul's, do the same? What a very strange time we are in as a community, right? So much going on. So much change. Some known and some yet to be known. A new organ to be funded and installed this summer. A new director of children and youth and young adults and families to be found and hired. Still navigating uncertainties of what it means to gather together and to do so safely. Not to mention the question of whether or not God is calling me to a new ministry in a new place and what that will mean for all of us. There is a lot right now for us to navigate. Even though all of it has to do really with us growing more and more into who it is God is calling us to be. It is a lot. And the voices and the noises, they're plentiful. Worry, anxiety, fear, anger. They are making their opinions known. But so is God. If we can tune our ears to hear. Through the noise is the voice of God speaking words of hope. Of trust. Words of new life. Even resurrection. If we will listen. If we will hear. 
if we will trust, and if we will follow. Two weeks from today, we will know the answer as to whether or not I will be leaving this community. This summer, the new organ will be installed, and it will be spectacular. We will find and hire the right person we need to minister with our children, youth, young adults, and families. But then there will be something else that yells for our attention. There will always be something that tries desperately to drown out the sound of the voice of God, the voice of peace. So friends, let's not let that happen. Let's listen together for the voice of God in the midst of all of it. Let us listen for the voice of peace in the chaos, the voice of hope in the worry, and the voice of love in the fear. Let us gather together right in the middle of it all and feast at this banquet that God has prepared for us. Let us pray. God, this world is so loud. Our lives are so loud. Our minds are so loud. Help us to listen for your voice in the midst of it all. Help us to listen that we might hear. To hear that we might see. To see that we might trust and to trust that we might follow, knowing that you will always lead us where the pastures are green and the waters, they are still. Amen.